In this power queen, 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, power, full size kitchen refrigerator, a high end gaming PC workstation, full size household vacuum cleaner, an electric hot plate, a batch of wash, a 120 volt mini split heat pump, full size microwave, a full size household gas furnace. Well, let's test out uh, this charger. I'm a huge fan of smart batteries. Let's unbox these things from Power Queen. Okay, we've got a uh, pretty standard uh, power cord here. Here's the charger itself. Got uh, some cables here and then a nice uh, big Anderson style connector, it looks like here. AC power goes in that end. And then on this end here, we've got a fan and uh, an LED indicator light information on what the light means. And then we've got uh, the other pigtail here with uh, some ring terminals and some documentation. Let's open the next box. I always like it when they uh, include the documentation in this little baggie so that you can keep track of it all. We've got terminal screws, washers, and caps. And here is the battery. So it looks like we've got Bluetooth and low temperature charging protection. And then I always love when they just put a little cheat sheet on the battery itself so that you have all of the important quick parameters easily available. Everything's pretty standard here in the specs. Max continuous discharge current of 100 amps. However, this is interesting. It does surge up to 500 amps for one second. That is a lot. That must be why it's a trolling motor battery. I've got a really good surge test coming up. Stick around so you don't miss that. And it says it has low temperature charging protection here too. We'll be testing that coming up. And you can connect them four in series, four in parallel. Well, let's test out uh, this charger and uh, take a look at the app quick. All right, got this all hooked up. And the nice thing about these uh, plugs is they only go one direction. So go ahead and plug that in. Here's the charger right here. Let's plug it into the wall. And there we go. Let's take a look at the app and see what's going on with that. All right, here we are in the Power Queen app. Let's go ahead and add a device. And I'm going to just search via Bluetooth for now. Looks like it found it. Let's go ahead and uh, tap on it. Let's go ahead and say check details. It has a state of charge indicator over on the left hand side there with an estimated charge time remaining and I'm sure it would change to discharging. It tells us how much power is going in, what the current is and what the voltage is. Looks like you can change the name. It has a cycle counter and uh, does uh, have some firmware on it. Tapping down at the bottom, the light bulb indicator. It just is telling you tips and ways to connect it. You can uh, turn off the discharge on the BMS and you can also completely power off the battery so that the Bluetooth is not consuming any power. So if you're not gonna use it for an extended period of time, uh, you could go ahead and do that. This is my full-size kitchen refrigerator that I use uh, on a daily basis. And uh, if you take a look here, we've got the cord coming over here and uh, it's coming back here to this uh, testing setup where we're going to see how long this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen will run that fridge for. Simultaneously, we will be doing a capacity test on this with the Victron Smart Shunt. Now, this is a very prolonged test at a very low C rate. So it is a discharge that's less than a 0.2 C rate, uh, which is what most capacity tests are run at. So that tends to skew the numbers a little bit to the low side. This channel specializes in real world tests, and uh, this could be something you're really trying to do. Use one of these batteries to run your fridge during a power outage or something like that. Back here, we have a power station. It's kind of uh, the middleman uh, for two reasons. One, I need an inverter to convert the DC power from the battery to AC. Reason number two is sometimes I'm gone to work or uh, doing something else when the test finishes and uh, this will see the fridge through so that way I don't uh, come home to a warm fridge and it also records when it stops seeing the input from this battery so that we know exactly when the battery dies. So let's just uh, plug the battery into this power station. Notice that it is 2.32 p.m. that we're starting this test at. And then this is the smart shunt here and you can see I've zeroed everything out. For me it's gonna be a couple hours, for you it'll be just a split second. Okay it's 10 a.m. This uh, fridge test uh, has now completed using this Power Queen 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I was about an hour late uh, to getting uh, back to this. This battery here ran my full-size fridge for approximately 18 hours. Let's see what our capacity uh, ended up being. All right, and the results of the capacity test, 98 amp hours. However, notice that the number in the bottom left, 1.3 kilowatt hours. So very, very close to the full capacity. And based on that uh, 1.3 number, it's actually pulled over capacity. And like I said, the numbers get skewed a little bit to the lower side because I discharge it at such a slow rate. Anyway, I call that a pass for sure. All right, we just uh, finished the fridge runtime test on this 12 volt battery. And so now uh, Power Queen sent out this uh, really nice uh, charger for lithium iron phosphate batteries. So we're going to recharge this battery from dead to full. We've got the stopwatch here and uh, we're gonna see how long it takes. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And you'll see that there's a green light and then it's going to turn red and start to charge. So go ahead and start the stopwatch. And when it is uh, fully charged, that light is going to turn green. So when that uh, turns green, then we know that uh, it is fully charged. So keep an eye on that and uh, we'll catch you here when it's finished. And just so you can see, uh, we were dead. We're up to the bottom 1%. As you saw, it took just over five hours 
for this uh, charger to completely recharge this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. That's great performance. I really love this charger. And because it's because it's a 20 amp unit, it is the perfect size to charge these batteries up by themselves at the recommended charge rate. All right, can this Power Queen 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power? Follow this black cord. A high-end gaming PC workstation. Here I've got three 4K monitors, and I've got a 4K gaming benchmark running on that to push the PC as hard as we possibly can. Notice down here that uh, there's nothing plugged into the power outlet, and uh, that's because we're getting power from that battery. This is the Golden Mate lithium iron phosphate battery based UPS. Fantastic little unit. And uh, you can see here that we're pulling almost 600 watts through that. The Power Queen battery is awesome because it is smart. Now we've got the app right here. You can see that it's estimating that with basically a full charge, we've got approximately two hours of runtime off of that. And check that out. We're pulling 600 and almost 700 watts out of it. 51, 53, 52 amps. So it's handling this no problem. Of course, this is a very heavy load on a PC. If uh, you were just doing basic email or what have you, uh, you could probably easily get four to six hours of runtime off one of these batteries. All right, can this 12 volt battery run? Full size household vacuum cleaner. Let's find out. Look at that, 1500 watts, 125 amps. Oh, that is great to see. It just shut down for overcurrent protection. That's exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see it be able to handle a heavy load for uh, a few seconds, and then we wanna see it shut off to protect itself in overcurrent state. This is the trolling motor style battery, so it should be able to give us a huge amount of surge right off the bat, and it self resets, which is even better. Anyway, the trolling motor battery will give a big surge of power and uh, run a really heavy load for a minute, and then uh, its overcurrent protection will kick in if that load is sustained. We also like to see a self reset, so that way if you're out in a boat somewhere or, or even just at home and you overload it, to have it automatically reset is very good. All right, another high amperage test. We've got this uh, 12 volt power queen battery plugged into an electric hot plate now. And based on that last test with the vacuum, what uh, should happen is we'll turn this on. This has even a heavier draw than that vacuum did. And uh, we should see this spike way up to uh, above 100 amps of discharge. And uh, that uh, that battery should run it for a little while and then it should cut off and uh, protect itself uh, from a high amperage situation. So let's uh, give it a shot here. Yeah, check that out. 135 amps, 1600 watts, 1700 watts. And there we go. It just shut down. So it is uh, in an overcurrent state. We learned that it's self resets. So let's go ahead and turn the load off so that uh, when it resets, it doesn't try to run this heavy load again. Let's watch the app as it resets here. And there we go. We're back online. So I think Power Queen has knocked it out of the park as far as giving us a good balance of surge power and uh, overcurrent protection. All right, one of everyone's favorite tests. Can this Power Queen 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate trolling motor battery power? Follow this cord, a batch of wash. Now this is a gas dryer. You can see that it's just plugged in here with the washer to standard 120 volt uh, plug. This test would not work with an electric dryer. However, even with this being a gas dryer, it's the hardest thing to start. Once it's running, it's okay. But if you can imagine this full load of wet clothes, trying to get that all started at a tumble, takes a large amount of surge current uh, to make that happen. But this is a trolling motor battery and uh, it can output some significant current right uh, when it starts. So let's uh, let's see what uh, happens. I'm gonna put the app right there so that uh, maybe we can see uh, some of the information. All right, starting three, two, one. It uh, struggled a little bit and it, was, it didn't record, but uh, this can pull in excess of 3000 watts for just a split second uh, to get started. But uh, that uh, power queen battery fired it right up. You can see that uh, now that it's running, we're only pulling uh, nearly 400 watts, 350, uh, right in there, bouncing around a little bit. So not very much power at all. All right, let's uh, do the wash next. Okay, we're on the spin cycle here on the washer. And if we uh, look over here, uh, we're pulling around 600 watts. It's fluctuating a little bit, uh, but approximately 600 watts. So piece of cake. So as you saw, this uh, Power Queen battery can easily run a batch of wash uh, for you. In fact, uh, based on uh, my calculations and other tests I've run on these batteries, in my particular situation with my machines and uh, for how long they run on uh, cycle, I can usually get uh, a total of two batches done. So two, two loads of uh, wash in the washer, two loads of wash in the dryer on a single one of these batteries with full charge. This inverter is incredibly heavy. So for this next test, we're gonna be using some extension cords. But do we want to know if this Power Queen 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate trolling motor battery is able to run? Follow this cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Well, let's find out. There it goes. Firing right up. Let's go back in the garage and see how much power it's pulling. All right, we're back in the garage here. 
And uh, here's the app. And uh, on startup here, you can see that uh, that mini split is pulling the mid 700 watt range. And that's just because it's barely turned on and it's uh, getting everything uh, warmed up and stuff. It'll actually ramp all the way down to like 200 watts once it just kind of starts coasting and maintaining the temperature. Generally, I'd say I see an average of a full four hours of runtime off of one of these on that mini split heat pump. And I can get less if it's really cold and I can get more if it's uh, a warmer day uh, or if it's in air conditioning mode. Today we're running it in heat mode. All right, can this power queen 12 volt trolling motor battery power follow this yellow cord comes down over here we've got a full-size microwave right here we've got the app pulled up let's see what happens three two one look at that 1900 watts 153 amps that's a lot of power still going oh and it just died all right so that is a very good performance factor on that Bummer that it didn't run the microwave, however, I prefer to see that. And in fact, I think this battery had the perfect balance because what uh, it was able to do is provide a huge amount of current for a short period of time. Uh, I call that surge power. Anyway, it's able to provide a huge amount of current for a short period of time. A couple of good seconds, you noticed. It, it ran that microwave for a good 10 seconds. I think we were below 20 seconds uh, before it cut off but then it protected itself and went to overcurrent protection. That's exactly what we want to see. Enough oomph to get something going, but still having overcurrent protections in place. So really good job, Power Queen. Next test, can this Power Queen 12 volt, 100 amp hour trolling motor battery power? Follow the yellow cord again. A full size household gas furnace. The secret sauce to making this work with an external power source like this battery is this little guy right here. This is the easy generator switch. And uh, you can see that uh, the extension cord just comes and plugs into a receptacle right there. And uh, then you've got this simple toggle switch to uh, go between grid power. It's calling it generator power. In our case, it's, it's inverter power. I absolutely adore this thing. If you live in a cold climate and uh, you have power outages and you wanna be able to run your gas furnace uh, while the grid is down, this will save your life. And I'll leave a link for the video down in the description about when I installed this, so you can check it out further. And we have ignition. All right, we are fully up to speed here. Let's just uh, check it now on the app. You can see right there, we're pulling just about 500 watts exactly, 39, 40 amps. And uh, with its current state of charge, it's estimating about uh, two hours uh, of runtime. Now, one thing to remember about furnaces is that they cycle off and on. And so rarely is your furnace running two and a half hours nonstop, right? And so you'll actually get quite a bit longer run time as this cycles uh, off and on and maintains the temperature. All right, we just got this uh, battery out of the freezer. You may uh, be able to see the frost and stuff on it. This is a very frozen battery. I was out of town the whole weekend and this sat uh, in the freezer the entire weekend. So it is as frozen as a battery can get. We've also got uh, this trusty Power Queen battery charger. We'll be utilizing that to test uh, low temperature charging protection on this battery. It says right there in big letters that uh, it's got it. Uh, we'll see uh, if that is indeed the case or not. Now, notice that uh, we've got a flashing green light here. What'll happen is when I plug this charger into this battery, that's going to turn red for a second. And then in theory, after a few seconds, it should shut off and turn green because the BMS inside this battery should stop and deny all charging to this battery until it warms up. So you can see here that uh, it's below zero on that battery. So nice and chilly. All right, here we go. And there we go. That's exactly what should happen. So good job, Power Queen, on giving us low temperature charging protection on this battery. All right, so how does this compare to the competition? I'll leave a link for the spreadsheet uh, that you're seeing here down in the description. So you can uh, see every single battery that uh, I've tested, how it uh, compares and uh, what results were from the various tests. I think Power Queen has really hit it out of the park on this one. It checks pretty much every box. And I think it's a fantastic offering. I'm a huge fan of smart batteries. I've said that many times on this channel, but uh, smart batteries with little apps like this are super helpful uh, just because it helps me see what's going on in the battery and I don't necessarily have to hook up a shunt uh, or something like that. Low temperature charging protection worked flawlessly and the way they've engineered this, uh, this BMS to be able to provide a huge amount of current to get something started, but then to go ahead and trigger an overcurrent protection uh, after a fairly short time is wonderful to see. That really brings a lot of peace of mind. Makes me feel a lot more comfortable using this battery. And I absolutely love this charger. It's super light, easy. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this. And now I want to hear from you. Please leave your comments uh, down below. I try to read and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. I always say the smartest people are in my comments section. You guys always have so many great thoughts and ideas to share. I love hearing from you. Also, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Those are 100% free to you, but benefit the channel tremendously. We've got all kinds of great content coming up really soon. A sneak preview. Uh, we've got a, a larger uh, battery system uh, going in right over there, so uh, you won't want to miss that. We'll catch you all next time.